Meet Munro Bergdorf, a model who has been controversially appointed the UK champion at UN Women, a charity that seeks to improve the lives of women and girls and promote equality within civil society, the corporate sector and government. Well, it's controversial because Munro was, to put it in the modern parlance, assigned male at birth, or born a bloke, as others might put it. 17 women's rights groups have signed a letter to the charity complaining about a transgender woman representing them on the committee, especially since part of their written objection is that Munro has in the past objected to women making references to our female bodies. Although Munro did once set up a nightclub called the Pussy Palace. So empowering, don't you think? It was Groucho Marx who said, I don't want to belong to a club that would have me as a member. Well, I'm not sure any woman should want to belong to a group that would have Munro Bergdorf as their champion. But there's another good reason all women should rip up their membership of this group, in my humble opinion. Take a look at their reaction to the revelations of sexual violence by Hamas in October. Is there a reason, though, Sarah, that you can't specifically call out Hamas? You and women always supports impartial, independent investigations into any serious allegations of gender-based or sexual violence. And within the UN family, these investigations are led by the Office of the High Commissioner of Human Rights. It took the group a full 57 days after the Hamas attack to make any official statement and even then, that was to condemn gender-based atrocities, or mass rape, as the rest of us call it. it. Seems to me that this group really has a problem with language, and also with reality. So, Munro Bergdorf and the UN Women's Group probably deserve each other. Here to debate, here in the studio in London, are Talk TV contributors Esther Kraku and Paula Roan Adrian. Thanks so much for being with me both tonight. Um, what do you make of this story? Let's start with you, Esther. Uh, it just seems amazing to me that of the 33 million or so yeah. women in the UK... <laughs> yeah. A um, biological male is, is their choice. That's quite an interesting... You know, I always think, what would happen if we ignored people that are trying to force their reality onto us? Because I don't believe we have an obligation to validate falsehoods and delusions. Certainly the law doesn't, public policy doesn't. And I don't think individuals in a country that lives with, as we say, we have free speech. I don't think we have to either. Um, but this insidious drive now has infiltrated so many aspects of society. I think on the one hand, I personally cannot be bothered uh, to constantly be outraged by this because I know there are some people that will never have their minds changed, which is fine. But on the other hand, if we ignore it, what will happen in the future? How will our children be raised? How, how will we be able to tackle it if it becomes like a, a, seems like a cancer that will never go away? That's the bigger problem I have here. Clearly, Monroe Bergdorf, every, she, you know, this person is very famous in the UK, and this is a trans, trans woman. That's a biological man that has believes that they were born in the wrong body. That's fine. But you're insulting women, effectively, by saying this is the only person that can represent mm women, 33 women, 30, well, 33 million women in the UK. Well, what do you think about that, Paul? Because mm -hmm. I think they're not saying that she's the only one, but she's the one they've chosen of the 33 million. That, that does seem slightly jarring, doesn't it? Uh, no. Ah. So my position is, of course, that the right person is chosen for the job. Um, and if the right person is uh, Munro, then Munro is the right person. I, I, I'm not fearful or don't feel challenged or don't feel that I'm in competition with Munro, let me just make it clear. I don't know who Munro um, is personally. I've only read about her. Um, I read the letter that was written mm. to the um, UN uh, uh, women's group, UK group. Um, and what I understood from the letter, the concerns were twofold. The first was that Munro was not pro-women. And the mm. second was that Munro had written a number of historical tweets mm. um, that were racist and that yeah. were homophobic. Now, for both of those reasons, if they're right, then I would agree. Mm. Because clearly then Munro would not well, be in a well, I mean, the let's, let's just, for the let's job. Let's just remind ourselves of exactly what it is, because if you're choosing anyone as a diplomat, mm. a representative of an organisation, I mean, you wouldn't want somebody who, for instance, said in... Called, a, called a somebody on Twitter in 2012, a hairy, barren lesbian, said she wanted a gay basher TV star, 
and called the suffragettes white supremacists. I mean, it's not it's not the best outreach thing, is well, it? I mean, no, but can, the, I, can I just say, when we talk about outrage and when we talk about a cancer, uh, I believe that the outrage and the cancer is somewhat, um, uh, somewhat misguided. Let me explain to you why. I'm intrigued that we continue to talk about trans women. Mm. I mean, truly. Well, why do you think it is? Well, I tell you why it is. It's because there are certain groups in society that are happy for what are two marginalised groups to infight. Okay? Well, and and, and let me explain is... to you why. Well, because if, if this amount of energy was ex expended on why it is we still have a gender pay gap of 14.3%, okay. if this energy was expended on why it is that professional sportswomen are not mm -hmm. being catered for in the same way in terms of their commercial contracts. Uh, why it is that Maybe Serena because they're getting Vinny beaten up by, by, by lesser male athletes. Why it is that Serena and Vinny but that's, and that's, Williams that's, that's were not being paid argument. the same amount that's a disingenuous uh, argument. finals as they were for men. That's a disingenuous then, argument. Then I would I mean, kind of understand well, that you, these allies Esther. who suddenly you're pretending, appear... You're pretending not to know why. There is a reason why. There's a reason why we're fixated more on the issues to do with trans women than trans men. Because you don't have sporting organizations validating trans men in male sports because it doesn't exist, right? There's a reason why we're, there's there's all this sort of controversy around trans women in female prisons because it doesn't happen the other way yeah. around. That is the That's, reason why. And to pretend or to yeah. juxtapose that against other legitimate issues is completely disingenuous. I agree, yes. You know yes. why this person, Monroe Bergdorf, who was born with a penis, cannot represent women in this country because this person will never understand uh, gender-based violence because this is a biological man. They will never understand how it feels as a woman to have a biological man in your toilet because they're a man. I, by the way, I agree, I agree with both of you a bit, and I certainly agree with you, Paul, that, and I would rather never talk about these issues well, ever exactly. again. But unfortunately, as we all know, they keep coming forward because, I mean, kind of deliberately provocative things like chewing, choosing a biologically born man as a woman's representative just comes up. I'm going to bring in, though, we've got coming from Nashville, Tommy Lahren is from the Tommy Lahren is Fearless uh, uh, podcast. Thanks so much for joining us, Tommy. What do you make of all this? Well, listen, I think we need to start calling this what it is. This is an absolute slap in the face to actual women, and I refuse to use the term biological women. I refuse to refer to myself as a biological woman. I am not a woman. I'm not cisgender. I'm not any of these other things. I am a woman. And I thought that the feminist movement was cultivated to stand by women, real women, and female empowerment and women's rights and our spaces and our sports. But unfortunately, that movement has been high hijacked by what I call the Rainbow Mafia. And now this whole trans movement has decided that their one goal, not about making equality for trans people or awareness for trans people, has been about overtaking women's sports, women's spaces, women's rights. And the fact that there are now certain activists that have completely abandoned what should be the actual feminist movement in favor of this Rainbow Mafia, to me, is laughable. And if they're going to call me transphobic for saying that, in the words of our swimmer Riley Gaines, I would say, well, then I guess that makes you a misogynist. We're not using these terms, these labels, these definitions anymore. We're going to call things like they are. We're going to speak with science at the forefront, and we're not going to play these games anymore, at least here in the United States. Well, whilst I've got you there, Tommy, in the United States, uh, it does seem that the United States is sort of ground zero for a lot of this stuff. Yeah. And I'm, I wanted to take us on to another story, because California, I know you're in, in uh, Nashville, Tennessee, a very sensible state, I'm sure, but uh, <laughs> over in the slightly crazier state of California, uh, a new law has come in. I couldn't quite believe this when I read this. A new law's come in saying that all large to toy retailers in California have to have, quote, gender-neutral toy aisles. And apparently this is because uh, uh, instead of having a sort of clear aisle for boys' toys and a clear aisle for girls' toys, that's a bit too... Um, it's a bit too... Uh, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a bit too obvious. It's yeah. a bit too... Uh, well, the 20th century and every century before that. Um, and, uh, and so apparently now, you know, sort of children and their parents should be able to sort of skip around the aisles and choose whatever toy is most suitable for their gender identity. What do you make of this law? And law it is. 
Well, I'll tell you, I did live in Los Angeles for three years before I fled to Nashville, Tennessee. And I'll tell you, there's a lot of problems in California. Homelessness, taxes, regulations, illegal immigration, drug use, open-air drug markets, filth on the streets, human feces on the streets, needles mm. on the streets. And I would think that gender-neutral toy aisles would end on the last of list of priorities for Governor Newsom and the rest of the Democrats that control that state. But... Alas, we've discovered that that is their priority, finding retailers that have already been through enough with the COVID lockdowns and shutdowns, finally regaining their ground after that time, also inflicted on them by Democrat politicians. And now they're going to be fined if they don't have gender neutral toy <laughs> sections. I'd also yeah. remind people that in California, because they're felon coddling laws and policies, you can actually steal $450 more than these retailers would be fined. Yes. And that would be considered a misdemeanor. So let's just put that in perspective. You can shoplift, and that's essentially the same thing as a toy aisle that's not uh, gender neutral. Well, that's uh, uh, California uh, priorities for you. I don't know why everybody hasn't fled that state. Uh, thank you, Tommy. Um, I, I've got to bring that back to the studio. Uh, uh, Paul Ness, I think the idea here is that uh, we shouldn't impose uh, gender identity performativity, I think, mm. is one of, the, one, of the, one of the bizarre terms that it's used. Uh, but here's something that slightly subverts that argument. Um, there's a study that just came out. The most popular uh, toys for girls on Amazon, jewellery box, <laughs> princess castle and karaoke microphone. And uh, you don't need to guess which sex these are the most popular toys for on Amazon. Stunt car, dartboard, walkie-talkies and toy soldier army SWAT helmet. I think the point is, and it's a shame that they had to bring in a law... Uh, but I think the point is, is that it's OK if your son wants a pram. Exactly. And if your son points to a pram uh, on the shelf, buy your son a right. pram. It's well, no big deal. If your that's son being very generous. To, if your son wants to dress up as a um, Disney princess and says, I want to dress up as a Disney princess, let your son dress up as a Disney princess. Mm -hmm. If your daughter, conversely, wants, wants to... Wants to get a toy soldier army SWAT helmet. Exactly. Absolutely. It's no big deal. Well, the, the thing is, I think that. that's a very generous Last assessment because these kinds of people are known for thinking that everything has somehow been... is a result of social conditioning. Right. So I don't think they're mandating this because they say, it's OK if your son wants to wear a dress. Not in my house, but OK. Um, it's the point that they, they actually Esther, think... They actually think... It's OK young if your people, son wears a, a dress. Not, not in my house, It okay. will be fine. But they, they actually think young people are socially conditioned to this, even though it goes against all the scientific data on this. The, the reality is men like... Well, boys like things, girls like people. And that's just that's just the reality of how we're genetically and predisposed. it's interesting and that well. you say that, that, that you think, or that you think that people are suggesting that they're social conditioned in the same way that you think that somehow your son will, will no, it's just grow not up it's just not, it's just not happening in my house if he wears a dress. It's just not happening in my house. Well, that's kind of clear. I'd like to thank both <laughs> my guests in the studio. Thank you, Esther and Paul. And thanks very much, Tommy, for joining us all the way over in Nashville, Tennessee.